everybody and welcome to another Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and I am joined with by the fabulous Jenny Doan and we are so excited to be and here today. I don't know how this happened but we're both I'm Polka, she's Dot. That's right. <laughs> Polka and Dot. Polka and Dot. So welcome. We hope you guys are having a fabulous Tuesday. We're excited to be here with you today. Let's see where people are tuning in from. Let's do it. All right. We have, is that Lizbeth, you think, from the Netherlands? Yep, that's what it looks like. Awesome. Patty from Florida. Or Lise, maybe. Lise Beth. Thank you for being here. Sarah from Key West. A couple Florida people here. Someone's coming to visit us um, oh, yeah, on and I'm Friday. Here. Oh, Jake's I'm here. here too. I'm He's back. Here. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> we missed him last week. Um, Linda from Texas says good morning. Thank you guys. Martha's here. Martha's a Martha big... is we our see good Martha friend. Yep. I hope you're coming for birthday bath bash, Martha. I think she is. I do have to say there was a North Pole. North Pole, yeah. North in, Pole is, is that real? Yeah. Well, it has to be real because when it's snowing, there's nothing you can do but quilt, right? That's sure. and so you quilt all Santa year Claus round. You, you need North all Pole. those quilts to keep you I'm warm. Pretty, is that, I, I, here's what I'm wondering, North Pole. Is it really snowy all year round, or is there a non-snow season? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I I know I've never been there. I haven't either. I, I know. There also uh, is a Poland. Poland, yeah. I've actually been to Poland. That's Poland's, awesome. Poland's beautiful. That's awesome. Beautiful. Um, well, I mentioned Birthday Bash just briefly. We have that next week mm -hmm. here in town. Uh, if you're not already planning to come, you should. Oh my gosh. Big birthday party. It's going to be the best. We actually, we do a big dinner with the Doan family mm -hmm. and we have some tickets left for that on Wednesday night before the big festival Oh man, I, kick they, off. somebody must have had to cancel because I thought those have been sold out forever. So I know. That, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. Last so minute opportunity. You can come and come and join us. We have a good time. <laughs> eat some food and laugh together. We don't spit while we eat, we no. promise. No, but we laugh a lot. <laughs> so. All right, maybe some of the boys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But either way, we um, Jenny wanted to just share a few things. And I well, actually, actually, yeah, I still... We actually, we actually have this whole plan yes. of things to do today for Facebook Live. But I'm also filming for the next tutorials that yes. are going to come out. And I have to finish binding this quilt so I can film it this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I wanted you, I thought you guys might want to see a little yeah, see how update she does it. on how, how I, um, how, how quick and easy it is to do what I do and, and uh, how to make the corners and how to do the ending. Sometimes when you see it again, it really helps. Perfect. So uh, I hope you don't mind um, watching the binding. Make sure this is really flat. Yeah, and so that. But I also don't want to give away our uh, future tutorial. Oh, so it's, don't even it's ask. A, guys. It's a secret. secret. We're not going to show you. Sorry. It's a secret. <laughs> All right. So I'm coming up on this corner, and I've got my my binding my binding uh, cut into strips, uh, ironed in half, and um, we're just sewing it a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that's not usually the problem for people. The problem usually comes in the corner which I'm coming to right now. So I'm at the corner. I'm gonna stop a quarter inch away from the edge, or so. Or so. And then I'm gonna turn this and just angle off. So, um, so we're just oh. gonna come straight off the off edge. Off towards the point. Yes, just straight off towards the point. And then we're just gonna pull this out and bring it straight down. So this has gotta come around and uh, then we're gonna we're just gonna turn this now. Hold it so it doesn't. This is the. Thank you. You're welcome. This what I do is I slip my thumb under this edge and pull it up so that it folds even with that top edge of the quilt right there. Can you see that? And then we're gonna come right down this side. I'm hoping we're getting a good close up on this because this is one of the things that. Um, oh, it's it's looking pretty good. Is it? Let good. me know, guys, if if that's good. All right. All right. So then we're gonna sew down here a little bit. And okay. then I'm, cl I'm close to the end, so I need to hook these together. And I leave, I leave a little bit of, uh, of room in my, whoops. I leave a little bit of room in my, um, my binding where Which I'm gonna hook it together. So let me show you what I do here. This is how I end the binding. And you don't start on a corner ever, right? No, you'll, I always start in the middle of a side okay. or on the edge of a side, edge of a but side, just sure. on the side. So what you have to remember about this, this is a really cool way to end your binding, is that however wide your binding is, and our binding is two and a half, that's how far you want to overlap it. So I'm just gonna lay my pieces right here, and, um, and I'm gonna overlap them two and a half. So 
here's my two and a half mark, so I know that this piece right here, wait a minute, let me show this, make this a little easier. There we go. So we can see the bottom piece right there, and we're going to bring this over two and a half right here. Because it's two and a half inches wide, we're going to overlap it two and a half. We're going to clip this right here. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up like this. And this one goes that way. And this one I'm going to bring up. And it's going to go across it like this. Okay. Then we're going to sew side to side just like that. Corner to corner there? Yeah, corner to corner. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I always say, I always say <laughs> I always say their words wrong. No problem. Now, if you don't have enough room, like right now, I'm a little tight in this. I don't hesitate to do this and just give a little more room. So brave. <laughs> the, the chat the chat gasped. Yeah, they, did they, they gasp? all gasped with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a woman living on the edge. I'm it? telling That's you. Right, always. All right. So now I'm going to lay these together. And I just have a little bit uh, extra sticking up over the top right here so that I can see where to begin. And I'm going to come side to side. And just sew down here like this. All right. Now I'm going to hold it before I cut it. I'm going to open this up and see if this is going to lay flat in here. And if it's going to lay flat in here, then I'm good to go. If I, if it, if I feel it all like it's going to be a little loose, so this actually might be a little loose because see then when you sew it down you're going to get this little rumple like yeah. here so then i'm going to take this off and i'm just going to set it back a little more and i often have to rep reposition my binding so that is um that's nothing new for me so uh i'm just going to put this on here sometimes i get it right on but of course not when i'm on camera <laughs> no but that's all right this that's the curse of live video but that's okay well and this is this is how we do it so the top piece always goes out here opened up straight across the bottom piece comes up and now i'm just going to move this in a just a little bit more okay, so wait I'm, show that show that one more time mom it's a okay. hard angle all right so this top one when you're sewing down from the top this top piece you open up and it wait, comes wait, across hold it hold all right here we go and then this one comes up from the bottom and you open it up and lay it across like this just like that. And I, I had just a tiny edge sticking up, so I'm going to stick up a tiny bit more. And then that should make it just lay down nice and flat. All right, so then I'm going to get, I'm going to get started on this edge, and then I'm going to make sure this is all straight under here because it gets a little wonky here at the end. have to make sure I'm actually, looks like I'm, like I'm pretty close to the same thing I just did, so let me, let me move this back a bit. This is a little space to work with right here, so you just have to see how I clip that so nice so nobody could, would gasp. <laughs> All right, now here we go. So now I have a little bit more room, and that's going to lay a little nicer. And then we're just going to go side to side like this. Now we're going to open it up, and we'll see how if this lays nice and flat. Now see how much nicer that is? Oh yeah, that's perfect. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this off. So I cut this part off right here. It's going to go right back into its fold. Let me get all these extra threads off. It's going to go right back into its fold right here, and I'm going to sew that down. And that's how I finish off the binding. But I have another trick for you even after this. All the best ideas. But wait, there's but wait, more. There's more. But wait, there's more. That's right. All right, so let's get the nice pull on this. All right, it's sewn clear across. Little cutter. So one of the things that's happened as I've gotten older is that it's gotten harder for my hands to hold on to things. And binding is something I do fast and quick mm -hmm. and love to bind. But the holding of the quilt has gotten very hard for my hands. My hands will hurt here. It hurts in my fingers. So, you, you know, we don't want to give it up. So we come up with ways to do things that make it easier. Absolutely. So I'm coming over here to the ironing board now. All right. You're going to have Trade to move you. move your little phone. All right. All right. 
So now, this is, this is what I do. This is how I bind my quilts. So from the top, ooh, we got some type of sirens. Something, something happened out there. From the top, I'm going to iron this so that it lays nice and flat. So then I'm not pulling, I'm not having to worry about it. And I'll do this, I'll go all the, all way, the way around. around. Then I flip it over and I, so now this is laying nice and flat and give me my scissors so I can trim off these threads. Okay. So now this is laying nice and flat and it's sticking out here on this side right here. And then I take some glue. Now you, this is um, apple glue from Jalili and, but there's all kinds of apple glue. Yeah, Any like glue a, that's like water soluble will actually work. Yeah, so, I think we linked to the glue based it too. Oh, okay, good. That one. We have a, we have a, um, you know, it just depends, you know, it's whatever you want. So then I just put a tiny, tiny bit of glue along this edge like this. And then what I do is I fold over my binding and I just lay it on top like this. And you do it right on the edge, not by where you're stitching, right? Yes, right on the edge. Okay. And so, I mean, right, no, well, I do. like on the edge of the. Yeah, I don't do it. Itself. I don't do it on the binding. I right. do it on the quilt. Yeah. So then when you press this, the glue actually dries really fast and holds it down. So then your, your binding is actually held down. That is awesome. And there's no squeezing of your hands. So you can actually go along and bind by hand or because when we put this down, here, let me show you one more little part right here. Because when we put this down, we're putting it over this stitch line right here. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? The stitch line right here. Let me cut these threads so it looks prettier for you. There's a cop car race Something. chase. I know. I hope everything's in okay. In Hamilton, Missouri. Yeah. I hope hope nobody's hurt. Yeah, we don't get a lot of. Yeah. We don't hear a lot of sirens here no. in Missouri, so um, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of dots on here like this, and then we're gonna pull that around. Pull that around. Now I'm making sure that this goes over the seam line. Wait, I just think I talked to the wrong camera. I talked to Michael's camera. <laughs> That's okay. So, over here. So over here. I'm making sure that this goes over the seam line, just like this. So my little seam line where I sewed it on, I use that as my guide to make it just go over just a little bit. Yep. So then um, if I want to machine stitch this down because maybe my hands can't do it that day or, for, or I need it really fast. Mm -hmm. This will actually hold through a filming. So we've done right. this before and just filmed, you know, where we've just held where it down. It's cause, just basted. Because it just holds down until it, it's washed. Right. It'll stay till it's washed. But if you want to sew it on the machine, let me show you how cool this is because this goes so quickly. You want to use thread that matches your quilt. So I'm just going to take this off here real quick and do a little stitch right here. And what you're going to do is right along the, that ditch area, we call it the ditch where the two seams come together. Wait a minute. My thread is uh, twisting, bunched in here. Oh no. I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't get a hold of it. There we go. You get it? There we go. Ah, uh, there we go. Free at last. Oh. Yeah, don't try that either. My grandmother used to get so mad at me that I would bite my thread. Anybody else bite their thread? I just got to know that I'm not the only one. I do. You do? Yeah, we I try crickets. not to when I'm home. No one's but saying anything. I do when I'm at home. Nobody said anything, so it's all normal behavior for them? Good. All right. No, so they're saying you're a little. Am uh, I, what's the word? I'm a little crazy. A <laughs> little risky. Living on the edge, right? Yeah, living on the edge. All right, never mind. Never mind. They do. <laughs> Some of them bite their thread, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm not the only one. All right. All right, hang on. Let me trim this off. All right, so now this is when I do start on the edge for this. So I start right up here in the corner, and I just, usually I put on my glasses so I can really see it good, and then I just stitch right in here, right where this binding leaves the where it meets the quilt. Yeah, yeah right where it, you you've ironed it over and it's laying nice and flat and so then I'm just going to take and I'm just going to stitch this along here and I'll show you what happens let me stitch just a little more now if your binding is a different color than your border I use the color of the border 
because okay. that's what I'm sewing on. That makes sense. All right, so I'm just going to do this little bit right here. So look along here. You can barely see that I have that I have sewn on here. And on the back, gosh, why do we have so many threads today? I don't know. On the back, you can see that it caught that edge all the way down because we glued it right over that edge. So it just it's just an easy way to fix a binding yeah, and awesome. don't show the quilt. It's a I'm secret. Not, I'm not. Secret, secret. I got it. <laughs> all right, it so today we're actually gonna talk about some tools. That's to right. The main tutorial. Yeah, yeah. now for the main event. The main event. That's right. So people. First off, okay, everybody, first off. Everybody's admiring those beautiful new scissors yes. that you have on the cover. Oh, aren't those pretty? They They're are. rose gold. They are so lovely. I know. <laughs> I love them. I do. Yep. All right. They're sharp. Way, yeah, we sell those nice too. Lovely scissors. It's good to have a good pair of scissors. It is, absolutely. Really good. All right. So today we're talking about a couple of tools and we're also answering questions. So any questions you have, just spit it out we're going to keep we're going to keep talking about uh all of our questions we're going to keep um we'll answer anything you got and we're going to show you a couple of tools yeah i'll try and pull up questions so i can watch it while we're all right the fir going. first tool i get asked about a lot is this rotary cutter why do i use this rotary cutter uh, first of all i sew with um three other people and not everybody's left-handed that's true. And so we have uh, rotary cutters that we leave on the tables, and this means anybody can use it no matter what hand you use. You can use it either hand, just like this, really easy. Uh, and so I do like that. The other thing I love about this is that um, a lot of the rotary cutters, to change the blade, it's a lot of unscrewing and it's a lot, a lot of difficult stuff going on. Yeah. So this one, you just lay over in your hand like this. And then see this little red thing right here? We're just gonna pull this back like this and the whole thing comes off. So easy. So easy. So then you can just drop this off your blade, put your new blade on, put it back on here and clip it back. Yep. I love that. I think that's a great safety feature and it just makes changing a blade so much easy, easier than you know, unscrewing. I agree. I forgot how difficult it is to change on the other ones because I had <laughs> well, and a they different have that one little, at home. And, and they have that little washer. Yes. And you never know which way the washer goes. Exactly. You know, and so. And I was like, why? So I love that. Now, many times, because it's the same motion, mm -hmm. I've gone to open my blade and instead I have um, released my blade. Yeah, but that's Because true. it's so easy to put together, you can just put it together. That's true. So that's one of the reasons I like the splash. Also, they're happy colors. They're aqua blue and they're pink and they're... Yes. They're just pretty colors, so I like those. So cute. All right. Any questions on the um, rotary cutter? I don't think so, but so people were asking what kind of glue this is. We use apple glue on this particular demo, but you can also use... Uh, we have another one. Um, Mary, what's that other one called? Baste it. Baste it. Baste it. That's a good one. Um, any, any glue that's water soluble will work. Yeah. So, Because yeah. uh, when you wash your quilt, it's gone. But that's why you have to actually sew it after... You right. glue it because it isn't going to stay once it's it washed. It won't stay forever. It's just to help hold it. And, right. And, and it holds it so that it makes it easier for my hands. Yep, absolutely. We had a question. Yes. About, I'm ready. do you ever sharpen blades? So my husband actually has a blade sharpener and um, he does sharpen blades. Now when you sharpen a blade, you're kind of taking a layer off. And so it, it does make it sharp again, but it's not just exactly like brand new. Now there is, here's a, here's a trick I can tell you. If your blade is getting dull, you just want to flip it over oh. and you can get more use out of it just by flipping your blade over. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's something a lot of people don't know. So Rotating the tires. Yeah, there you just you go. flip the blade over and you're going to get more use out of it. That's a great tip. Now, if you run over a pin or something like that and there's a notch in it, you're done. Yeah, you're just <laughs> done. Either way you flip it, it's still there. It's not it's going away. There. It's terrible. <laughs> it's and terrible. Um, But the... But it does, uh, you can sharpen them and you can get little sharpeners, you know, and they do, it freshens them up, you know, keeps them going and, and, and they're pretty good. Awesome. So what else, Jake? Anything else about this rotary cutter? Anything yep. else you guys want to uh, know? Yep, this is the Ulfa Splash rotary cutter. I saw a couple, couple people ask the on the brand. the blades? Mm -hmm. Pardon me? Do I what? Oil the blades. No, I do not. Yeah, they come, they're kind of pre-oiled mm -hmm. and so I don't either. I just, if you, there was a lady though who was really having trouble with hers. Mm -hmm. And um, she bought a, um, a two-pack, mm -hmm. 
and she didn't realize she'd bought a two pack and she had two blades oh, on there. Yeah. So if you have two blades on yours, it's not going to cut very well. No, that's and true. so she didn't realize it. And, you know, I said, just, you know, push them apart yeah, kind of with your thumb and finger. That's true. When you buy the you refills, they, mm -hmm. they really stick together because of that oil. Right. And so right. you have to push The them other apart. thing is, is that um, you can't really get a good cut um, going like this. You have to come down on it mm -hmm. to get a cut. You know, you have to use this kind of downward motion to get a cut. And so um, make sure that if your table is too high, mm -hmm. you're not going to get, you're going to be cutting at it like this and it's not going to be working for you. So make sure your table is the right height for you or, you know, or have short. your neighbor saw the legs off yeah. or, you know, whatever it takes because <laughs> we got to keep cutting. Or put them right? up on, on stilts. Yeah, for, we got to keep cutting. Yeah, or if we, yeah, I never have the trouble. No. I never have that trouble. <laughs> my, no, my table too high. For sure. All right. all right, so the next thing we want to talk about is these slotted trimmers. These yes. are the new trimmers I've been using in all my tutorials, and um, I am loving them. They make sense to my brain. That's something about rulers that um, people don't realize is that oftentimes you'll have a ruler, and you put painter's tape on it, and you mark it, and you mark it. If you're doing all that stuff to your ruler, there's a ruler out there that's going to work better for your brain. Absolutely. And so I didn't know that really was a brain thing. I just thought, well, I bought the ruler. I have to use the ruler. And... Um, if that tool isn't working for you, there's going to be another tool that's better. For me, this is that better uh, tool. Um, it comes two in a package, so you get all your sizes up to six and a half inches, um, even sizes, you know, two, one, two, three, four, or yeah, two, three, four, five, six, and then um, halves, so one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and like this. And these are for trimming up your half square triangle blocks. Trimming up your half square triangle. So yeah. I have a half square triangle right here, and we're going to cut it. And Perfect. I'm going to lay my ruler uh, corner to corner, and I'm just going to cut. I've sewn on either side of this line right here. And the way this works is, um, is that you're going to take your half square triangle, and you decide what size you want it. Now, I generally try to get make the best use out of my fabric, so yeah. this, this is probably going to be about a four and a half inch triangle. And see how, um, let me see if I have a, do we have a something? Oh, here, grab that. This? Yes. Yeah. So they'll be able to see this better. Perfect. So you can see how they have these lines right here, the stitch line. You want to put their stitch line on your stitch line. Yeah, that's the dotted line, right? Yes, the, the dotted line. line is the stitch line. And so, so it doesn't actually matter, you know, the rest of this gray area, um, I mean, that's supposed to be your, your quarter inch yeah, seam, your seam allowance. but it doesn't really matter because you're really only matching up the stitch line. So we're going to lay their stitch line on our stitch line. So just like this, and you can see how close this is. Um, and you're just going to trim those off like this. And you can come up one side and down the other. And you have a perfect half square triangle. Now right here on the corners, they have these little slots and you can put your rotary cutter in there and it has a little stopper so it can't like fly in and, and get you. But then these dog ears are already off. And I so it. it makes a really perfect half square triangle. Impressive. And this was one, you know, I, squaring is something I didn't do for a long time because I, I it couldn't make sense in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and then I use the block lock and it's pretty good, but I always never know which side to put it on. This worked for my brain. So yep. this was a perfect thing for my brain. And, um, and look how perfect that yeah, is. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. It's awesome. So, uh, so that's, that was a really good find for me. You know, I was actually teaching at a class and the teacher came up and said, I think I have something that, sh that you're going to want to Love that. Um, it's gonna make it's gonna make sense to your brain, and I'm like, oh, whatever. I get I see a million different things, you know, <laughs> and I use it, and I was like, oh, what? Yeah. This works, yeah, you know. They're awesome. Uh, yeah, so it really works. And then on the back, it's kind of cool because she has um, ways to make you know half square triangles and quarter square triangles, and how to make triangles out of, out of two strips, That's and awesome. you know, lots of different ideas um, on so. the back. To use that, Somebody was to use asking the about the price, and all the prices oh. and the links to the pr to the products are in the description below. Yes, okay, they're in the, the description below. So, yeah. so this I think this is like thirty some dollars. I don't remember how much, but I but when you think about thirty dollars and you're getting you know one that's one two three four say. five six seven eight nine ten rulers. That's right what here. I was gonna say. That's you know. my favorite thing about these is they're so versatile. You get all the different all sizes. All the sizes. And like I liked the block lock fine, but you're just locked into that one size yeah. basically. And so this you have so much. More and for options. some people, the block lock, they, it's it's yes. that's what makes sense in yes. their brain. So that's why I say watch what makes sense in your brain. Different tools work for different exactly. people, yeah. and we're just offering you some options here because the block lock is a great option. Yeah, and it totally. doesn't slide. You know, so it's it's really a good option. Yep, it is. All right, the last thing I want to talk about, leading right into that, is um, our rulers right here. 
Um, I came up with these rulers specifically for pre-cuts. Yes. Um, so this is a 10 by 15, and I need a... 5 by 15. It's 5 by 15. Yeah. I need a, a couple of squares. All right. So I've got a 5-inch square right here. i got to show how these work. There's one right there. This one's already quilted. It'll work. <laughs> well, it's like based oh, okay. together. Let's do what now? Simmer. I think oh, breathe. Think, think Slow down. Am I going too fast? Breathe. Sorry, guys. Breathe. I get really excited just, about fun. stuff. I have and there's a lot of questions, but I forgot them, so. Oh, no, go back. Ask them no. again. No, you're good. You're good. Just keep going. We're just going to. Hmm. All right. I'll oh, take a breath. I did see what These pattern is awesome. the quilt behind us. This is the Missouri Star. This is Star. the Missouri Star. Mm -hmm. We have a tutorial on it. It's true. All right, so I want to show you how these work with, with our rulers. And the, and the reason I came up with them is because of the way I sew. And I'm going to, this is a two and a half by eight inch mm -hmm. ruler. The reason I chose those sizes is because you can lay it right on the ha edge of a charm and cut it right in half without measuring it. You know, half of five is two and a half, and that's just how it is. The other thing is, is that when I'm cutting diagonally, this ruler fits exactly diagonally Perfect. and Four cuts. And I, I didn't, this wasn't a problem for this little one, but it was really a problem for this one because yeah. the ruler I had was 12 inches. And so I would literally, I'd go like this and cut and this, you know, I'd do this as it went along. Right, you only had like the 12 and then the big 24. And right. So, it, the so you're either working with a giant out. ruler, which is really, again, hard for me and hard for my hands. Um, but this one, this one works, it does diagonally perfect and it does the same thing. You lay it on the edge and half of 10 is five. So it's five by 15 and you can cut them right in half. You can cut them diagonally. And I also love, I love the color. So my favorite ruler at home is, um, is one that's painted on, the, you know, the lines are painted on. Mm -hmm. So the whole middle of my ruler is has worn off. Is gone. <laughs> yes. I mean, you can't see the, even the measurements yeah. because it's comp I've used it for so long. And so these are actually etched in, so they're never going away. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to wear off. They're not going away. I love the yellow. I love that there's not too many busy things going on here. Um, we put a 45 on here because I use that a lot. Yep. But um, if there's too many things going on, um, my, my brain just, it has to work so hard to find the line. And this way, um, it makes sense. Now, if I have a half an inch on the edge of this, I'm gonna make a mistake. I'm the same way. Um, I, just, I just get cutting and going, and I won't do it the first four or five times, but when I get into a rhythm, all of a sudden I'm gonna be like, oh! you know, and I'm gonna, look yeah. down, I'm gonna be like, what, what Somebody happened? asked what the brand is on those rulers. Oh, these are our these rulers. Are our these Missouri are Missouri Star, Star rulers. rulers. See, yep. the, see our little logo Exclusive right here? Exclusive from us, so you can get those on yeah. our website. I said to the, you know, when I came up with I'm like, can I make my own ruler? You know, they're like, what? yeah, yeah. Why I not? guess so, you know. <laughs> Natalie was making templates and Jake was making templates and I'm like, because I really want something that works with the pre-cuts because I'm 99% uh, pre-cut. Pre so there's, there was a question that keeps coming through and it's kind of random. But she said her mat, her cutting mat is slippery. Is it? And is there any way to fix that or anything that you, suggestions So you the have? mat slides around. Uh, she's worried about the mat sliding around, not the rulers on top. I'm thinking the rulers, but. Oh. Okay. Well, if know. your mat is slippery, you can do like we do and just put some double stick tape and hold it down. I mean, that's, our mat doesn't yeah, move anywhere. anywhere. Um, and it's because it has double stick tape. There's a couple of, they sell all kinds of products that you can put on the back of your ruler so that it doesn't yeah. slide. My favorite, and this is because I'm really cheap, <laughs> if you go to the drugstore, <laughs> there's oh, geez, this there is the is inner first workers. aid tape that you can buy and it's clear. Oh, okay. And you just put a little piece of that on here and it just really just, just sticks it right up. You know? I've never heard that one. That's yeah. a new a, trick. a lady at a retreat showed me that. So That's you know awesome. and I know there are tons of yeah. things that are out there. And there's even a gal who has like you can paint mm -hmm. um, stuff on there and do it. And they're all good. You know, they all work for different purposes. Yeah. So. It's interesting because I know some people really love those grips, but they drive me crazy. Yeah, see I can't use a grip I can't on mine. Use them on I my can't ruler. use it. I want I want my ruler, I want it to be able to move and yes. pick up and when it sticks I'm just like Yeah. I because feel like I, I'm fighting with it all the time. Yeah and I can't I can't get it picked up, you know, my I'm like can't get my thumb under there to pick it up and it's just stuck right but there. But it's like you said, yeah. we're all different. We're That's all different. So I never works. ever, but there was a lady um, who was at a retreat. I was at, um, oh, I think in uh, Indiana. And she, she says, oh, I just used the little uh, That's so, tape. And so I'm like, clever. that works. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. It was perfect. Yeah. So that worked. So what are more questions? Any more questions? Smitten and Kitten made it. She said she's late, but she's here. Oh, Smitten Kitten. Welcome, Smitten Kitten. <laughs> we got to meet Smitten well, Kitten. I know. Would you please come visit us? What the 
correct height of cutting table is? Oh, well, if you're talking for me and Misty, yeah. it's going to be different yeah. than it is going to be for Carol when um, when we oh, wait, first. My mic, my mic was shut off. So it was what oh. was the correct height? Oh, for they a want to know table. what the correct height for a table for is. for a cutting table. For Misty and I, it's going to be different than we're for a tall. lot of you. We're very so we're tall. tall. Um, when Carol, we had a little gal, Carol, who's worked for us forever. Yeah. And when she came uh, in and was cutting fabrics, I actually had to buy her a stool <laughs> so she could reach my cutting table. She'd climb up on this stool so she could cut. So basically, you just want to, yes, you just want to measure uh, your hip table. Height. And it should come about hip height, yeah. you know. And so this, this height of this table is perfect for me because that's when you can get your good downward yeah, get the right cutting angle motion. And so I, I would just say hip height oh, I is good. Signal. What else? More questions. Any more questions? What kind of iron are you using? We are using the Oliso Auto Lift Pro iron. <laughs> it's awesome. It's magic. It is. I do love it. Yeah. It's got a good shot of steam. Yeah, great steam. Here's my requirements for an iron. Good shot of steam. Long cord. Auto shut off. <laughs> yes. It's got those things. And it, it gets nice and hot. Too. Yes. Now, the problem with the Aliso is that when you iron with an Aliso all day, yes. you get very used to leaving your iron like this. Mm -hmm. And the other day, I was ironing some things for Natalie. And we were ironing with a with a you know a regular iron. Uh -huh. And I just left it there. And she's like, Mom, oh, this is no. not an Aliso. You know, she starts smelling something kind of crispy. Yeah. There, there is that danger. But... It's great if this is what you're using. So Copper asked, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just jump Copper right asked in. Copper what the uh, glue was that you used. Apple glue. Apple glue, yeah. It's called Apple glue, and uh, it's just a basting glue. Yeah. And, but there's, you know, if you, if you look up basting glue on our site, I think you'll find a there's, few there's different options. A few, and we've linked to one great. in the description, so yeah. works All great. great. Awesome. Let's see. Any other questions? Hip height. Mine's a little low, she says. Yeah. Put them on, uh, you can get those like bed risers. You can set your table up on oh, even yeah. bed risers It'll to lift it up a little bit. A lot of people do that. Yeah. And they'll also cut PVC pipe because the table legs on like a plastic table, they go in like this. So you can cut PVC pipes to the height that you need and it just sticks underneath and. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's really great. Yeah. <gasps> More sirens. Oh, this is scary, a little, little yeah. nerve wracking. <laughs> All right. Well, right. um, so Jenny has a, another surprise, well, I think. Do I have another? another do we surprise? have time? Do we have time for another one? We're pretty much out of time. We're ruining people's lunch. Oh, <gasps> no. Oh, no. We are. There's... That's not true. It's not a thing. No. That's not a thing. It's not like we go over it every time mom's here. <laughs> every time. Listen, I just always have these. But a million things. It's Let's a special it. opportunity okay. to have Jenny here. So I have, uh, Misty, tell them what I have right here. So. Um, our, my nieces, her granddaughters have been wearing scrunchies again. Scrunchies, scrunchies. are back. They're back. <laughs> and so turns out they're really easy to make. So we thought we would just show you. She's got a couple two and a half inch strips right here and she's just put them together. We're using blue and yellow because that's our Hamilton Hornet hometown colors. Um, we're just going to sew down the sides of both of these scrunchies. Yep. Easy peasy. Scrunchies meaning two and a half inch strips. And a scrunchie, tell them it's, what a scrunchie is. A scrunchie is, is like a, a gathered up fabric hair tie to hold your ponytails. They were very big when I was young. In the 80s. In the 80s and 90s. And they're making a resurgence just like all the things do. It's kind of like leg warmers for your hair. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is this going to be a scrunchy necklace? Because no, this looks like gonna it's going to be huge. Well, do you feel like it's going to be really long? I mean. All right, now I sewed across the end, and I'll show you why in just a minute. It might be really long, but you're going to gather it all up, right? Yeah. Are you going to use all of that for one? I might. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. You just never know how full of a scrunchie it's going to make. That's true. Oh, and I'm sewing this with green thread. Because we switched it for the, uh, Beautiful. <laughs> for the quilt. That's all right. It won't matter. It's on the inside. And it's for a scrunchie. Oh. Could be a custom scrunchie belt as well. <laughs> so, guys, keep asking questions so we can keep, we yes. can keep on for a minute. She, uh, this is the Eversown Sparrow 30 that we're sewing on today. They are great little machines. They are great All right, little I need a little, uh, a little, a little pen. You can use a wooden spoon, a skewer. The reason I sewed across the end is because this is the easiest way to turn anything. Yes. So you just kind of pull it apart, 
you put your pen on there like this, mount it to your belly, and then you just pull it down around it like this. We got a question about the ironing mat as well. <gasps> this is Ooh. the wool pressing mat. This is an awesome, awesome mat. Awesome mat. So our pressing mat is, um, uh, it's wool, and it, if you if you use steam, it could smell like a sheep, but only the first few times you do it. And I love it. It makes yeah. things so crisp. So see how I push this all the way through. Now I have the end. We're just going to pull this. Someone asked how long this was. This is a full width of, width of fabric, two just and a half inch a strip. full width of fabric. All right, we're going to want to iron this real quick. All right. You want me to do it or you want to do it? Well, I'm just going to... I'm just going to iron. Okay. Misty. You don't really have to iron it, I guess. Natalie just said, you don't have to iron. That's true. You're going to scrunch it up anyway. Yeah. All right. I won't iron then. All right. <laughs> they talked me out of it. All right. Now we have to actually cut this end open again because we're going to come through with elastic. So you're going to need elastic. Any elastic will work. Uh, Depending upon whether you want to make a headband or a ponytail holder is how long you're going to make it. We are going to then now push this through. Now, there's, this is short, so it could slide through. So what mm -hmm. I do is I take this, and I'm going to pin this to the, end. to the end so it won't slide through. Just like this. Perfect. All right, Jay Lucas asked, mm -hmm. how now, do you clean a self-healing rotary mat. So there's actually a couple of ways that you can do that. Um, don't throw it in the dishwasher. <laughs> it'll don't work. put it in the bathtub. It'll, it'll work. It'll be clean. <laughs> no. It'll be clean. It might be clean, but it won't work. So actually what happens want to, to me a lot is that I use um, like cuddle fabric mm -hmm. and I get, you know, when you cut a yeah, crease, get you get stuck in there. fluff stuck in there and an eraser. Oh, I have yeah. heard you, that. You just, you just use an eraser. Just like a pink school eraser, right? right. Yeah. Just, and just erase over it. What is it? Oh. Also, uh, there were hand also motions. Also, know where she can get that extension table for the sewing machine. Oh, uh, this comes with this. This comes with the Eversewn uh, 30. All right, so Sorry, see, this, see this little scrunchie right here? So now I'm going to grab both ends like this. And I'm going to sew my elastic together first. So you can see that's one strip and it yeah. makes a good size scrunchie. Yep. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to sew my elastic like this. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You can tie a knot in your elastic if you want. Um, I just like to sew mine back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, I used the reverse button on my sewing machine. I saw someone asked about the magic trick with how you turned it. She just sewed across one of the ends and then used a, you can use a wooden spoon or she used a pin to use that seam yeah. to push against, to turn it. So that's what she was doing there. Sorry so, you didn't see and that. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just poking one end into the other. And you can actually stitch this down once you get, once you, you've, I folded the edge under so and no slid the edge. other edge in so there's no raw edge. So you can actually stitch this down on the machine or stitch it down by hand. You want to attach those two. And then you just have this great little scrunchie that you can wear in your hair and put your ponytail. Yeah. And Cute. Don't you want to put your hair in a ponytail? Sure. Somebody also was asking about the pinked edge. Let me do a, How a do really good that? side The pinked <laughs> edge. So on, on a pre-cut, the pinked edge, every company has their own way of measuring. Oh, a side pony I for mean, the it 80s. That's right. I think it's, that's perfect. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. The side pony. That's right. Anyway, the, um, the pinked edge, companies me measure those differently and generally if they, <laughs> I think it looks awesome. I don't know what's <laughs> happening up here, but. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's Sorry, I know, it's, it's not, not laying flat, but. Anyway, awesome. anyway, it's a great scrunchie, side, easy yeah. way to do it. Everybody has two extra little jelly roll strips exactly. laying around. Exactly. And it's fun to do them in school colors. Your grandkids are going to think well, you're all that. Well, yeah, it'd be perfect. I was, all just, that. I was just thinking Ashlyn would love to make those for her friends for yes. Christmas. And Super then fun. what What was I answering? What question was I answering? Pink so edge, yeah. Oh, oh the how pink you measure pre-cuts. So on, a, on the pre-cuts that have a large pink edge, they generally measure from the inside of the peak to the inside of the peak, so the, so the shortest distance across. On Modus, where they have that tiny one, they measure from the outside. Okay. So it's, um, that's just how they do it. And uh, well, I was, I'm, I'm impressed that it didn't turn into a belt 
<laughs> it's a beautiful scrunchie. Yeah, it's a beautiful. It's scrunchie. great. It worked great. One, yeah. So, so but, you know, you don't even have to trim those strips. One length is uh, works great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks I didn't everybody for know tuning in. Everybody was awesome today. Yeah. We had great comments. Thank you, and, everybody. And we will see you next week. We'll be live a lot next week for Birthday Bash. So make sure you can tune in whenever possible. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you guys see later. See ya.